Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Right now, investigators are trying to figure out what caused a plane to crash in Macomb County. That developing story tops our news here at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Everod Kasumi. And I'm Rhonda Walker. We know that three people were hurt in this crash and new this noon. We are learning that a pet dog that had been missing has been found. Let's get to Victor Williams. He joins us now live. He's been tracking all the new developments. Victor, what are you learning? We know that this plane went down sometime yesterday with three people on board. All three of those people are in the hospital hoping to recover with severe burns, broken bones and other injuries. But there was some real concern for finding that dog. Yesterday, that was the case with a lot of people just combing the area, hoping to find the six month old golden retriever by the name of Charlie. And thankfully, according to the fire chief right here in Ray Township, like I said before, it was a big relief that was done today. Uh, you know, the community really put an effort to finding Charlie. We had the residents out on their side by sides, their golf carts, their tractors, their cars. They, they were they were scrubbing the fields looking for Charlie. So this is a really happy ending that uh, that the person who found the dog uh, got into the right hands and Charlie's back with his family, her family. And once again, we have three people that are still trying to recover from this plane crash. Uh, one person is a 44 year old. Another person is 37 years old. And then the youngest person on the board or on board, I should say, was a 17 year old. So we'll have more on their condition as well as more on what the pull, uh, fire chief had to say about the rescue of Charlie. In Ray Township, Victor Williams, Local 4. Well, we are certainly glad that Charlie has been found and uh, the community coming together for that effort. Victor, thank you. A man is rescued from a house fire on Detroit's west side. Investigators are telling us that it happened this morning at a home on Marquette around 6 o'clock in the morning. We're told a 50-year-old man was inside of that house and was taken to the hospital to be treated for smoke inhalation. He's currently in temporary serious condition. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. Well, we want to turn our attention now to the forecast for your Monday afternoon as we give you a live look outside at the beautiful Detroit skyline from our Windsor Sky Cam. Meteorologist Brandon Roos standing by with a look at what to expect this afternoon. What a terrible look we were giving you. It looks, looks awful outside. What a day here we are, and it's Monday. Wanted to quickly look back. In case you were wondering, I just looked up the observations from the airport in Ray Township, Michigan from yesterday to see if weather could have played anything in uh, what happened there with that plane crash, which happened around 3 p.m. and conditions were pretty calm. 85 degrees, no wet weather in the area, a little east-northeast wind at 7. I know the uh, pilot or the members on board had reported issues with the engine, but I don't believe weather had anything to do with it yesterday. Here we are on a Monday now, and we've got low and middle 70s all over the place, and you can feel a little difference in the air out there, thanks in part to a little wind out of the west-northwest drawing in just more of that comfy stuff. No more humidity, at least for today and tomorrow. Dry air is battling showers off way to our west and south, so all we really expect is a little increase in cloud cover as we head through the rest of your Monday. 76 now on our way to about 80 comfortable degrees and a dry Monday as well. We do have some wet weather in the seven day. Of course, we're forecasting for the Rocket Mortgage Classic four day PGA event at the DGC coming up. All righty, Brennan, we'll see you in just a little bit. Hundreds of UAW members are in Detroit today for the union's 38th constitutional convention. We're talking about 900 delegates from local unions all across the U.S., Canada and Puerto Rico debating and voting on changes. It's all happening at Huntington Place in downtown Detroit. They'll be nominating international officers, including president and vice president. Yes, yeah, so this is a convention that is held every four years. So welcome to Detroit. <laughs> Indeed. The Oakland 
The Oakland County Clerk and Elections Divisions are testing out electronic equipment ahead of the primary elections next month. The testing will happen all day long at the Oakland County Courthouse in Pontiac. Dozens of people are on hand making sure test ballots are tabulated correctly. We're told that the equipment is tested before every election to ensure accuracy as well as security. We have contracted with 19 of our communities to tabulate their absentee ballots for them. And that helps our local clerks. It allows them to focus on things like same day voter registration, um, you know, focus on their precincts, things like that. And it can be a cost savings for a lot of our municipalities as well. And Oakland County officials also say equipment testing is open to the public so anyone can attend to watch this important process. But with no more public hearings scheduled, the House committee investigating the January 6th Capitol siege is considering its next steps. Among those, the committee still wants to hear from the wife of conservative Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Let's get to Chris Poloni joins us from Washington with more. Only one thing was achieving President Trump. It's public hearings over for now, but the committee investigating the January 6th Capitol riot is still working. The floodgates have opened. We thought that the hearing this week would be the final hearing. Uh, but so many more witnesses has come forward. One potential witness the committee wants to hear from conservative activist Virginia Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. If we need to, we will subpoena her and, and get the information. We're not out to, to get anybody. We're out to get information and get that information to the American people. Thomas has come under scrutiny for messages she sent to former Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows questioning the 2020 election results and to Republican officials in Arizona whom she reportedly pressed to help overturn the Trump election loss. Committee members know serving Thomas with a subpoena to testify would be controversial, but insist it might be necessary. If they have information or a role in an effort to overturn election, yes, uh, they're not excluded from examination. The committee also wants to know what happened to Secret Service text messages from January 5th and 6th. A criminal investigation is underway to figure out why those messages were apparently deleted. So we want answers to that. Thursday's primetime hearing focused on former President Trump's inaction for more than three hours as his supporters overran the Capitol. He continues to insist he did nothing wrong. They're coming after me because I'm standing up for you. The former president repeating once again the lie the election was rigged and stolen from him. The committee's next public hearings will be in September. Leaders say they haven't decided yet whether they will make criminal referrals to the Justice Department when their work is done. In Washington, Chris Pallone, NBC News. All right, Chris, thank you. Also making headlines, President Biden continues to improve health-wise. Yeah, his doctor says that his COVID symptoms are improving significantly. And there was a letter released on Sunday where Dr. Kevin O'Connor reports that the president's main symptom now is a sore throat and that his body aches and cough have diminished considerably. President Biden has had his third full day of Paxlovid and continues to tolerate the treatment well. His symptoms are also being treated with oral hydration, acetaminophen, and a buterol inhaler for need, as needed for occasional cough. He has not experienced any shortness of breath at all and will continue low-dose aspirin as an alternative type of blood thinner. And Dr. O'Connor says that the BA5 variant is particularly transmissible, so President Biden will continue to isolate in accordance with the CDC recommendations. Meanwhile, for the second time within the last three years, the World Health Organization is declaring yet another global emergency. It's something we've been talking about a lot over the past few weeks, monkeypox. And the cases have spread rapidly in a matter of weeks across dozens of countries, including here in the U.S. Blaine Alexander has more. With cases rapidly on the rise, this morning, the World Health Organization is sounding the alarm on monkeypox, declaring the virus a global health emergency. We have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little. The last time the World Health Organization made this designation was January of 2020 in response to COVID-19. Rarely lethal, but deeply painful, monkeypox is spread through close, direct contact, causing lesions and sores. This is occurring in a population of principally men who have sex with men and bisexual men. But now the CDC has confirmed two new cases in children, one in California, a second in Washington, D.C. Experts say a rare but concerning development. 
This virus is now getting into family circumstances. It can spread to women and in close family contacts where there is a lot of hugging and kissing. Across the country, the numbers are steadily rising. Less than two weeks ago, the CDC listed just over 1,400 confirmed cases nationwide. Now, that number has nearly doubled with cases in all but five states. The nation's epicenter, New York, where nearly 900 people have been infected. Jeffrey Galaze is one of them. My uh, pain level is excruciating. He is now part of a clinical trial taking an antiviral medication for the pain. He says getting treatment has been nearly impossible. If we don't get ahead of it now, it's going to be too late. So far, vaccines have been in low supply, with people waiting in long lines hoping to get the shot, something the Biden administration is promising to address. We're going to be releasing hundreds of thousands of more vaccines in the next uh, days and weeks. That was Blaine Alexander reporting. And of course, we'll keep you updated as more information about monkeypox becomes available. Time now for Help Me Hank Recall Alert. Family Dollar is recalling hundreds of different products because they weren't stored properly. Yeah, the recall includes toothpaste, mouthwash, deodorant, over-the-counter medicines. It's a huge list of products. The products were stored outside of the labeled temperature requirements. If you use the products and had any bad reaction, you should definitely contact your do doctor and the FDA. We have a full list of every recalled product right now on our homepage of clickondetroit.com.